So the website we're using is right here. It's 3dp.rocks slash lithophane. And that'll bring you to this page where you're gonna be loading an image. So if we go to here to choose files, we're gonna load the image that we actually got in the machine right now. So you can see as it loads the image, this is like a negative photo. I'll show you how to change that like we had the two different ones. So if you go over to settings here and go to image settings, you just change it from negative to positive. Then once you go back to your model, you hit refresh, and now you got a positive image. So and then some of the settings that I had on this page over here are going to determine the maximum depth that your kind of model get that gets created and the maximum size of the file when the model gets generated. And we'll go show what those do later. So give me one moment. So like once you got your model that kind of looks like what you want and it's an image that looks about right, you will just hit download. It'll put it in an STL format. And once you have your STL file, you'll be able to go into Fusion and load that STL file. So we're just going to open a new page here. We're going to go to open from our computer. And then I think it was this most recent one here. There we go. We got our image in here. And that little step on the bottom is not going to matter for what we're doing. But I'm just going to show really quick how to scale this and what size it is right now. So if we go to our manufacturer page, I like to use this as a little quick cheat to see like the reference of the size of the part that I got in Fusion right now. So if I go to a new setup and go over to stock, it'll actually show me this is like a 39 by 26 inch part. So if I want to scale this down to be, you know, 2.6 inches, I'll just scale it by like 0 0.01. So that's what we're going to go do right now. So we'll go back to design, click the model, go to scale. From one, we go to point one. So now if we go back to manufacture, go back to that setup page, look at our stock, and then we see now we got a 2.6 inch part, which is a good size part for, that's the size that we want in our machine right now. So and then say I, say I didn't want to do this whole rectangle and I just want to limit it to the square. That's, you know, just keep the machining lines inside of here and not go all the way to the edge. Here's a quick way of doing that. Go to design, add a sketch on the plane that we want. Draw a quick little square over the area that we want. And let go of it. Finish sketch. And now when we go back to manufacture, so I do already have a saved feature and that, this is a nice thing. So once you already have a saved feature for any model that you load up, I just have to hit this whistle engrave right here and it should apply it right to my model, which it did. So, and I can go edit that now. Say I want to change the step over and make it a finer step. I can go to 0 0.005 and then the geometry I can choose that square selection like I just talked about, hit OK. And now we got a 5,000 step over within that square. And that is as simple as it is for getting a new file. So then we would just go to post again, put it on our USB drive here. Just not plugged in at the moment, but that would put it on our USB drive and then we'd be good to go and load it on the machine after that. So over on the screen here, we are using Fusion to do the engraving and to get the G-code because we are programming it right to a solid model. So here's our solid model for the two different models that I was just showing. We got one where it's kind of negative and it goes into the material. And then we have another one where it's kind of like raised up and embossed off of the material. And the one where it's raised up and in embossed off of the material is the one that we're going to be putting in the machine right now and running over on the setup. And the setup that we got going so these little clamps come with the XS Tech kit and you can kind of just roughly put them over the material here. I do have a little stop that's, I'm using this as my X axis like stop. And then I'm just using the front of my table for my Y right now. These are just little thumb screws and they got a little T slot nut that's under there that it's connecting to. In this program, it's a pretty simple program. It only uses one tool. A reference site, our Z0, is going to be the top of this part for every part that we put in the machine. We have a bunch of different 
stock that's all about the same size stock so we shouldn't have to reset our z0 every time we load a new part that should stay the same and then with our x over here as long as we're bumping up against that and keeping to the same like front of the face of this table we should be able to load every part in there and any image that we base off a of center should put right into the center of the stock so just confirming that i'm locked down here so for currently getting the files from the computer onto the XS Tech, I am using the USB key with Fusion 360. So when I do post it out here, it's just saying that it's going to be putting it to my USB drive if I had it in there at the moment. So once I hit post, and if I hit post down here, then that would put this toolpath file on my USB key. And then to load it on the machine, we got a little USB hub over here. Once it's plugged into there, it should come and we should be able to see it loaded on our machine here. And we got our different files over here. So I already have the file on the machine, so I'm just going to select the one that we want to use. And you can see that's the image that we had over there in Fusion 360. So it's showing it extra rounded because this is the tool pass. So it's actually going to be leaving these really thin and that's just showing the tool path that it's going to be taking to make the geometry on the part. So now that we got our part all located where we want, we got it all locked down, we got our file loaded, we got our tool touched off, it's really as simple as just hitting cycle start at this point. And based on the level of detail that you want to get into the part and how fast you want to run it, you would be able to you know, run it faster or slower and get finer details the slower you're going to run it. The, how much you're stepping over can be all controlled by Fusion and the, and the tool pass creation as well. So this pr current program does run for roughly 40 to 45 minutes. So we probably aren't going to sit there and watch this whole one run. The one that we currently have in the machine is this model. And so something that I did with this one I actually cut it off on the saw so that I could maybe like drill a hole and be able to put like make it into like a little Christmas ornament or something. And you could even cut out, you could cut out the shapes while the part's in the machine. You could use the conversational programming to cut out a square or actually like cut out a shape to get your like ornament right in the machine or even drill a little hole for hanging it as well.